mental health can affect anyone at any age, and that includes the elderly. Here to shed more light on the mental health in the aging population is Dr. Radha Kambahampati. Is <laughs> from Baylor Garland. Welcome, Dr. K. Tell me your last name. Uh, Dr. Kamampati. Kamampati. Come on and party. Come on and party. <laughs> well, See, listen with an that added. That makes it easier, isn't it? <laughs> you, you are the medical director of yes, a very specifically new Baylor Garland Hospital that has beds for the elderly who are facing mental illness. Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, this is a ten-bed unit um, specifically geared towards people over 65 years of age and who are suffering from a psychiatric disorder. Okay, this is such a broad thing. Yes. Like, don't we all, when we age, don't we go through things that we would call m mental disorders, like fear of dying, like not feeling good, having pain all the time? Yes. And so, do we call that a disorder or just the natural process of growing old? Well, there's a difference between having symptoms and having a disorder. A disorder is disabling. Having symptoms is not necessarily disabling. The ones you mentioned, like uh, some anxiety about aging and uh, fear, fear of death, uh, that's all part of natural aging process. Yes. But when it becomes disabling to a point where you quit eating, you mm -hmm. start losing weight, you don't sleep at night, perhaps even start to hallucinate, and uh, start losing your memory function. Those are the points where you know you need some professional help, and this particular unit is geared towards that particular category. And is this unit geared toward counseling, perhaps psychiatric or spiritual counseling, as well as medication? Yes, this unit is unique in the sense that uh, we have a team of doctors, both internal medicine as well as psychiatric physicians and a psychologist on board. So, um, going back a little bit, elderly population typically have at least one or two medical illnesses. And we do not have good units in the DFW area where you can address both medical issues as well as psychiatric issues. Oh, we don't have that. Not many. I mean, at least not that I know of. But uh, we are uh, getting towards addressing that group of people where, for example, say uh, you have a patient with congestive heart failure mm -hmm. and severe depression. Mm -hmm. now, where would the patient go right now? It's very difficult I to find know. a unit. So You could go to the unit that could address the... the CHF. The, yeah, congestive but heart failure. But not necessarily the mental anguish. Exactly. So this is a unit where we have a team of internists and hospitalists who are available round the clock to address the medical issues and the psychiatric part is taken care of by the psychiatrist. Then am I right in assuming that if we, if we're going to have the medical issues, but if we can keep our mental health as well and good as it can be, we can still enjoy dancing sometimes or bingo or yes. living in the moment right. until that moment is over. Absolutely. Without going down the forever road. Yes. Now, um, the good mental health is at the core of the quality of your life. You could have... You're right. Yes, that is the core. Now, let's twist it around. If you do not have good mental health, it doesn't matter how well uh, you are uh, treated for your medical problems, mm -hmm. your quality of life will suffer. It's exactly right. And you are likely to be uh, non-compliant with follow-ups, non-compliant with your treatments, because if the core problem is a mental health problem, everything else just falls apart. And you're likely to get into a nursing home or an extended care facility because of the core issues that are not addressed, namely mental health. And we know that when we go into the nursing homes, that there's an attempt sometimes for the mental health, but not to the degree that you're, because I'm getting that yours is primarily mental health. Yes, primarily That's mental health. That's the difference. Yes, primarily mental health, and we cater to uh, psychiatric disorders per se. Mm -hmm. Is everything a psychiatric disorder or, or some things just normal? Well, psychiatric disorders, as I said, are extremely disabling. And I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what is normal and what is not normal. All right. As you grow older, let's say once you cross 40, 45, you are likely to have subtle memory difficulties. Okay. And uh, they used to call it age-appropriate memory impairment. 
-hmm. Now the new term is mild cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. Now a good 30 You're to forgetful. Forgetful. <laughs> but a good 30 to 40 percent <laughs> become dementia. Yeah. So a good yeah, maybe sometimes we just don't want to remember everything. <laughs> I, I don't want to remember everything. Well, but you know, if you say you <laughs> cannot remember your address. Yes. If you, if you cannot remember whether to make a right no, turn or a left turn. No, that would be bad. That would be very disabling. Will you come back and talk to us another time when we have more time with you? Yes, absolutely. Because I'm nearing that place where I'm really getting the loony. <laughs> and so maybe if I sat down with you and we played some bingo, maybe I'd be okay. Absolutely. Till the end of my life. Uh, the, the For one... more information, head to dthebroadcast.tv. <laughs> We've got a link to the Baylor Garland Behavioral Health Center. And thank you, Dr. K. Thank you're, you, You're really fun to be with. Thank I think you, people would you. be lucky to spend some time with you. <laughs> thank and you thank so much, you. Susie. We'll be right back. Thank you for the opportunity.